more counseling and <laughs> meditation services, excuse me, and a host of other things. She's also a, on the f f uh, faculty of John Carroll University. She's teaching there also. We just want to say welcome. Thank you. And thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure. So we're going to talk about leadership, and I just have a couple of questions for you, and if you could enlighten us with your theories. <laughs> That'd okay. be great. So we want to, uh, the first thing I want to know is just like, how do you define leadership? Um, so being a leader of a multi-million dollar company with over seven locations in Ohio and Florida, um, I had to really have my definition of what leadership was. And um, leadership for me is that I am the steward of the vision. So it is my job as the leader to ensure that the vision is being kept, that we are working toward the vision, and that everything that we're doing is lining us up with that vision. And how did you come up with that vision, if you don't ask? How do we develop our vision? That's yes. great. So um, I received the vision from God. Um, I'm just going to tell you that <laughs> real clear. Um, I received the vision from God. My husband and myself, we started the business over 20 years ago. And um, at first, we were a little uncertain, but God began to really reframe that vision of what we were called to do. Um, I, was a very afraid, I was very afraid of the vision. We had received several prophecies telling us that we would have the largest uh, minority-owned a mental health agency in Ohio, and I didn't want that. I was like, I, 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 you know, I didn't want it. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want anything to do with it. I didn't want to be responsible for all of those people. Okay. Um, and so um, when I received the vision in the beginning, I rejected it. Um, and I, as the, um, as the pastor was talking about here earlier, it was because of my own fear. Um, my husband had embraced it. Um, but I was not ready yet, and um, I paid the price for that. But the one thing about that is that God didn't stop um, staying on me about it. He kept putting the vision before me and putting it before me until I surrendered. Um, um, sometimes I say, um, you know, I surrendered. Um, sometimes it was, you know, saying, Uncle, yes, yes. I'll do this. <laughs> um, I have to be honest, you know, um, after a few no little issues, and then I got it together. But it was, it, it was not that easy just to say yes to it because when you're looking at something so large um, and that's beyond you, um, but that's what it had to be um, so, that, um, so that God could really be in charge of it. It had to be beyond me. Um, so I had to really um, get in line with that. Thank you for that. You're welcome. So why do you think leadership is important? Well, as the leader, he gives us the vision, all right? Mm -hmm. And then it is my responsibility as the leader to guide the rest of the team toward the goals and objectives to meet that. Okay. So somebody has to keep saying, okay, wait a minute, we're getting off task here, this is where we're going, um, identifying whose role is to do what within that vision. But somebody's gotta lead, somebody's gotta take charge because if not, then we're all over the place. Um, so, <laughs> okay, keep going. And someone also has to be responsible um, and take responsibility. I take responsibility when we don't do well, and I'll take responsibility when we do do well. Um, and so as the leader and um, guiding the people, I have to be able to say, you know what, I didn't make the best decision here with the team, and being able to take that. So ownership and transparency. Absolutely, absolutely. Mm -hmm. so you're basically saying you're keeping the main thing the main thing? I do, yes. I do, I have to, yeah. yeah. Um, sometimes I get off too. Okay. Um, but one thing about when you're accountable to God, he's going to nudge you back and he's going to let you know when you got off or either you're going to pay the consequences. Um, and so it's one or the other. And so you can either say, okay, God, how do I get back here? Or do I have to go down this road until I'm made to get back here? Okay. And that has happened to me. Okay. So you're kind of going into my next question, but I'll still ask is yeah. like, what, can you describe what your leadership journey was like? Yeah. <laughs> So um, I started out being a people pleaser. Um, I was afraid to lose people, afraid people were going to quit. I was um, afraid that um, it was going to make me look bad and that my name would look bad. So I started out wanting to please people. And then I realized, okay, this isn't working because they're going to leave anyway. And they're going to do whatever they want to do. And many of them need to leave. And so I was looking at myself having these um, feelings of rejection when people left and not realizing, no, they have to leave and they need to leave and they shouldn't have been here in the first place. And so then as I began to get healthy and build myself up, then what I was able to do is to start leading as what I say in purpose. And what I mean by that is I identify 
the, 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 the individuals that work with me their purpose in my organization. And what I also realize is what is their purpose when it's time to leave my organization. I realize that everybody's not gonna stay with me and that there is a time and a season with me. And when they're in that season with me, I wanna push them to their fullest purpose. And when it's time for them to go, I wanna push them next. Because when we hold on to people, that's when they get thwarted, that's when they get frustrated, that's when you start getting anger and resentments and all of that. So God had to work on me and my self-esteem first to be able to say, this is not about you, you're not being rejected, but it's time for that person to move on to the next. And my job is to build them up when they're there, help them to be the best that they can, help them to grow, help them to develop and say now bye bye is time to go mm -hmm. but I wasn't always there okay. not I mean, at all I think a lot of people have that fear in leadership yeah you go from pleasing people I know when we first started it was you know we would just say yes or we would even ask people even if they weren't qualified just because we needed a position field and it always backfired <laughs> I have a word for that I was just saying that yesterday um, at one time we looked at our business and my husband and I said we have a lot of faithful incompetence oh, Wow. Okay. I mean, they were so faithful and loyal. Oh, we never gonna leave you. <laughs> no, because nobody else is gonna hire you. <laughs> but they were faithful and loyal to a fault. But they were incompetent. So what we needed done, where the business needed to grow, we couldn't get it there because they didn't have the capabilities to get us there. Yeah. So you kind of, uh, what you were talking about as far as your journey and how he had to develop you, that sounds to me that he had to deal with you um, emotionally and spiritually. Can you kind of lead us to that? Like how, what was that journey like? Yeah. So um, emotionally, like I said, I had to work through the rejection and really know who I am and what I'm called to do. Um, so I'll, I'll just be very transparent. I think I was gonna talk about this today. <laughs> but um, right now in our business, we are going through a major failure. Okay. And this is the first time I've even spoken about it publicly. My husband's here. Um, um, let me introduce my husband. This is Councilman Brian Moore. Um, he's also my business partner. Um, so we started the business 20 years ago, as I said, and we grew and we grew and we grew. Um, and we grew um, over the last five years, our business tripled every year. Um, to the point we looked at our accountant one day and he said to us, um, you are in a financial bracket that most people don't ever make. And I'm not saying this to be boastful. I'm saying this so that you just understand the picture of where we are now. And so um, we were, um, my husband and I have always been big givers. And so we were still living very modestly because that's the type of people we are. And we were still giving a lot, doing a lot of ministry and doing things. Um, and then um, last year, our industry began to shift in the mental health field, um, our, our insurance industry. And so we started to see the signs of what were gonna happen and begin to prepare for it. Um, but we were not as prepared as we thought we were. Okay. As a result, um, last July, um, God told us, um, you need to lay off over half your staff. That's hard. And um, my husband confirmed it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, dear. As he puts in the ad lib, huh? <laughs> Just stick it in, huh? <laughs> <laughs> So um, I resisted. I said, I, I, I can't lay off half of these people. We had over 100 and something staff. I said, I can't do that. How are we going to do this? No. I said, there's got to be another answer. So we had money in reserves. And so I said, well, we got enough money in reserve. Let's see what happens in a couple of months. So my husband said, I don't think that's a good idea. It's not a wise business idea, but okay. So then November came, and the reserves were gone. And it was Thanksgiving. So we're sitting in the boardroom with our senior management team, and I said, we're gonna have to let half the staff go. So our senior managers start crying, and they said, it's Thanksgiving, and then it's Christmas. We can't let people go, we're Christians. And, you know, they start, and, and so my husband's looking at all of us like he was. <laughs> and he says, the Bible said to be a good steward. Oh, <laughs> he just started scoring all this stuff. <laughs> okay. And so I said, honey, I just, I cannot let these people go during the holidays. Well, we didn't let them go. My husband and I ended up doing some loans and doing some things in order to manage them. And then came January, and we didn't have a choice. Not only did we have to lay off 50% of staff, we had to lay off 70% of our staff because we waited. Okay. Um, I have cried and cried, and I have, um, 
But I told this story because I didn't make the right decisions because of fear, um, just because of not knowing, and also because I did not s listen to wise counsel. Okay. I was so worried about the people, and I remember God saying to me, because you stepped in my place as God, I mean, God will, he'll say some stuff to you sometime. And he said that to me, and I was like, oh, I just got on my knees, and I said, Lord, I'm sorry. And he said, these are my people. I would have took care of them in July. I would have took care of them. But because of my own stuff, I wasn't ready to release it, and I had to pay that cost. So now you ask me where I am. And I'm like, okay, we got some more that can go now. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I say all that to say is that I, I had to um, stop being so emotionally minded and start being more spiritually minded. Um, and also, um, really looking at what the principles of God, the principles in the Bible teaches us how to be good leaders, how to be good stewards. And if we follow those principles, they don't always line up with our emotions. Yeah. But they lead us to success. And that is the key. And I would have been led to the other side of success faster if I would have done that. Okay. So that kind of leads me to like, it may not be good while it's working, but it's working for my good. Yeah. You know Absolutely. I mean? Absolutely. Like, That's it good. It doesn't look good or feel good. No. It will turn out. No, good. no. I mean, now that I'm, I'm getting there to the other side. It's feeling better, but I'm like, my butt is still hurting from that right, spanking. Right, right. I'm like, you know, when you used to get that spanking and, you know, it's still stinging. I'm still stinging from that spanking. Yeah, but you'll like, never make that mistake again. Not like no, that. No, no, no. <laughs> so no. No. I would never, ever, ever okay. make that mistake again. Okay, so I know that you just said you're thinking some more can go, but you also made a mention of to um, when you were hiring people, you said you were looking for purpose. How does that look for you? What are you looking for in an individual when you're doing that? Yeah, I look for people who, when we talk about our vision, first of all, when you're coming in to interview with us, because our mission and vision is all over our website, I want to know that you've come in and you've done your research and you know what our mission is, and you tell me how you line up with that mission and vision okay. and, and where you see yourself. Okay. And, and, and once they're able to do that, I don't want to have to just look for it. I want you to be able to, to give it to me, and then I can see it and, and agree with that. Okay. Now, there have been people that come and say, well, the Lord told me I'm supposed to be here. And I'm like, mm, he ain't told you you're supposed to be here. You know, and I can tell that right clear. <laughs> right, right. But then there are some where it's like, yes, you are, you are in direct line with our mission and vision, and there is purpose here for you. So you fit. So yes, you fit. Okay. Yes. So what are, the, well, what are some unique cha uh, challenges that you feel that women in leadership deal with? Hmm. Um, I, was, I was just speaking on a panel about this, this th um, earlier this week. And there's a couple of challenges. The first challenge is um, privilege. Um, when I say privilege, our male counterparts um, have privilege that we don't have, Amen. that they don't even identify in the corporate world. Mm -hmm. um, and so many times, my husband and I can walk in a room, and they're immediately shaking his hand, right. looking at him, talking right. to him, even though I'm the CEO and the president, <laughs> and he is the COO and the CFO, right. Right. and he'll have to say sometimes she is the president. Um, and so I have, but what we've learned is we bounce off each other. And I say, well, you know what, if that gets us in the door, I'll use there. your privilege right. and so we're gonna go do that <laughs> you know and, and I will and I'm not upset about it because we respect each other and we have that dialogue right. um, and so it works in our benefit but there is privilege for our male counterparts oh, and then just knowing how to operate in a male dominant society I mean I go in companies and work with contracts where I am the only woman I'm the only person of color and then I'm the only woman. So double minority. So double minority. And so I had to learn, first of all, not to be um, timid. Okay. I had to also learn not to be angry. Because okay. we can go in as women and be a little defensive oh, and yes. angry and got a chip on our shoulder. And we looking like the angry black woman or just the angry woman. Right. And, and, and that just doesn't work at all. No. So what I do go in and do is I assert myself, but I also let them know I belong there. I've done my research, I'm just as, as educated, I have just as much to offer, um, and I respect what they have to offer. Um, so I go in a, as though I'm a colleague, um, I'm, and, and, that, and letting them know that I know I'm a colleague of yours. So you're not 
asking for validation, you know you're valid. Oh, I'm not asking for it. But I am also looking to see what I can get from them. Oh, I mean, yes. Okay. I, I, I am because I do know when I go in those rooms that there is something they have to offer me too. Okay. A and I'm willing to receive that. So mutual respect. Absolutely, yeah. Okay. Now, as far as your leadership in your business, mm -hmm. um, do you have issues with that being a woman as far as people following you or turning to your husband instead or anything? Like Not that? anymore. It used to be in the beginning. Okay. But because people know us so well, they know who um, is the president. Okay. Um, so not as much. It's usually when we are approaching a, um, different contracts. One thing about our staff, we're very diverse. And so um, if I do take my other colleagues that are white or um, I have a few that are Asian that work for us, sometimes they will divert to them. Um, and it's, it's funny, I have this one white gentleman that works with us and um, we do this whole thing on um, diversity because we have such a diverse staff. And when he didn't understand white privilege at first, and I really just had to teach him. I mean, I was just like, well, you it's have to real. learn this. It's real. It, yeah, it, it is real. <laughs> and it's required if you're going to work for this organization that you learn it. And so we did all this, and he finally got it. I mean, one day, he texted me like 2 o'clock in the morning. He was like, Dr. Moore, I got it. I'm going to use my privilege to help us. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Whatever gets us in the door. <laughs> and I said, now that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Whatever get us in that door. And so we laugh now when we go for some contracts or something. He said, okay, who's leading this game? I said, you leading this game because you know what this room look like. <laughs> so I said, you lead it and pull me in. But the key is that we understand, we have mutual respect, and we're pulling each other up. He uses his privilege to pull me up, and I use mine to pull him up. And that's the key. Right. Yeah. So uh, what are your, um, I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on mentoring or training the new generation that's coming? Yeah, so I'll talk just a little bit about my beginning mentor. Okay. Um, when I first got in the field, um, and, and I will say I learned a valuable lesson about mentorship, my mentor didn't look anything like me. And I was looking for somebody who looked like me, that could provide for me, and there was no one that had done what God was calling me to do. I mean, I was going to people and they were like, yeah, that's a good idea, baby, but, you know, and they were telling me all oh, why not to do it. Um, and there was um, a white Jewish male that I started doing some work for. And um, he looked at me and he said, you're going to buy my business and you're going to triple it. And that's exactly Speak what we did. Amen. This man mentored me to the point where he just began to speak in my life and really caused me to know where I was, and he really gave us the foot up. So when we started the business, we bought the business from him, and then we built it from there. Okay. And he was just even so, he said, I don't want you to have any barriers. I'm going to hold the note for you. Wow. Okay, you talk about favor. Say, the favor is and and favor. so he <laughs> held the note for us for five years, but even beyond that, he stayed in the business with us for five years to transition the contracts. Because he knew there was going to be opposition for me and my husband. Of course. Of course. But he stayed there was, now, now, now he was tough. I mean, he was very tough. I, I, I remember one day, you know, I said to him, you don't have a filter in the way you talk to people. You know, and, and he's like, well, what do you mean? I just say what, you know, what right. it is. Straight shooter. You know, I'm just, yeah, a straight shooter. Mm -hmm. And then I remember one day I was crying and he was like, would you stop crying? How are you going to be the leader and you cry? <laughs> I was all emotional about something right, right, right. and um, and so he just taught me we were so different but I learned so much from him and I was laughing this week when I was thinking about because the last time we talked we had a little argument we would always have these little arguments and I said I have to call him and tell him I appreciate you I appreciate so I think mentorship is so valuable but I said don't look for somebody that looks like you okay. look for what God has for you Amen. Because I would have rejected him. I would have said, this man don't have nothing to offer me. We don't have anything in common. But he led me in purpose. And he led me directly to my purpose. He guided me, and then he stepped back. And that's why it's so important. You know, we go to people and we say, I want you to, so many people come to me and say, I want you to be my mentor. And I'll ask them, what does that mean to you? People don't know what it means. They don't know what mentorship looks like. So you've got to understand what that really means to you and what you're really looking for from that person. Okay, so what does mentorship look like to you? Mentorship looks like to me, someone being able to first of all, identify what my purpose is. They need to understand my purpose if they're going to okay. mentor me, okay. all right? Then understanding that they're going to help me, they're going to hold me accountable. Okay. 
And they're not going to be afraid to say to me the hard stuff. They're not going to be afraid to, um, to push me somewhere else or to do something, you know, that will line me up in a certain way. Um, they are going to mentor me in purpose to where I'm supposed to be in the good and the bad. Um, and they're also going to support me. Um, and so that's what it looks like to me, someone who can truly know what I'm called to do and, and help me to keep in line with that. And sometimes when I get off, he will call me back and say, now, what are you doing that for? That doesn't have anything to do with where you're supposed to be. And sometimes we have to hear that because we get all over the place. A mentor needs to be able to speak into our lives and not us run away when they do that. Because we have a habit of running away and rejecting people when they say things that we don't want to hear. So that's a, a conversation or an example of you being the mentee or the mentor. No, I mean the mentee, yes. Mm -hmm. So what about you being the mentor? Yeah. How does that look for you? And, and I guess a second question would be, the hard part of it. Yeah. Um, I mentor very few people now. Okay. Only because it is so hard. And I am very, I've, I'm very blunt. And as you probably know, you know this about me, I'm very prophetic. Yes. And so when I mentor a person, God has already shown me their purpose and I get radical about it. And I don't have time for foolishness. And people come, and I'm so busy, and That's people come, so, so, so I tell, what'd you say? That's the first thing you told when I met you. I, I don't, I don't, look, I'm going to take a little time with you. I don't do this with everybody. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't have time. Because people come, and they say they want all that, and then you start, feed, and then they get off into this, no, baby, I don't have time for that. I mean, I've, if I see what's in you, I see where you can be, I see where you want to go, so I will, I will really work to get them there. Um, now, I'll be a little patient, because I know all of us, it takes a little bit of time. Um, but like I said, I'm, I'm so serious about it, because I feel like you being successful in what you're doing, I'm successful in what I'm doing. And so okay. it's a direct reflection of me when you succeed, if I'm your mentor. That's good, okay. And I guess my last one, what are, what are your thoughts of, on becoming an uh, effective leaders? Hmm. Um, I think being effective, um, truly is about, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to vision and purpose, but I'm also going to say knowing yourself. When we do not know ourselves, when we have all these blind spots that we don't know, mm -hmm. then we cannot be effective. Um, we have to at least know that we have these areas mm -hmm. um, and that we have people around us that can show us and call us out when we're in those areas. Mm -hmm. And that's truly effective leadership and being able to say, you know what, this is not my strength, but this is this person's strength and I can push them in that and I can step back in that, allowing them to shine. Um, I shine so well when my people shine. Effectiveness is about your team being built up and not just me. Right. Um, and so that's when I'm effective, when the whole, um, I am what's called a gestalt therapist, which is a body of, um, of psychology. And, and that body of psychology is about making people whole. And when we are all whole, and we are one working in our wholeness, when I have my director that's doing her role, and my, my manager's doing their role, and everyone is in their spot, and everyone's doing their pieces, then we're being effective. But when we're all over the place and we're all scattered, and I'm not working to pull everybody in, and I'm all over the place too, then I'm not being effective. We have to be centered and keep the vision before us. Amen. I appreciate your time. That Thank was, you for having that me. That was awesome. Thank you. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you for having me. I'm going to have to have her come back. <laughs>